I had a nice little intro discussion here, and the uh, <laughs> the renderer, I guess, decided to eat it. Um, apparently, it was corrupted. But the rest of the video is solid. So in this part, I'm just going to do a very quick uh, explanation of what we're seeing for tonight. There will be a 314 free fly that is taking place tonight at some point this evening. And Zylo at CIG uh, put U.S. time zone. Uh, so probably in the next five to six hours, I would say, is when it's going to happen. And right beforehand, there will be a new live patch. So if you're getting your friends started or a new player returning, be sure that they have their 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 uh their 314 up to date and just make them aware that they may have a small, you know, one gigabyte or something patch that will replace some files and then they'll be good to go. Make sure also that they have their paging files set up correctly. They should have at least eight gigabytes paging file, especially if they don't have uh, 32 gigs of RAM. If they have anything beneath that, should definitely have 8 gigs. If possible, if they cannot give up the space over, you may have a 12 gigs of, of, of paging file, preferably on an SSD of some sort. This is all stuff you can get done ahead of time, and then you have that small patch, and then you're right on the free fly. Uh, indications are that tonight there may not be a Zeno threat or a Ninetales lockdown. I will go in-depth the rest of this video discussing how to get prepared for the Ninetales lockdown and the Zeno threat incursions, and hopefully that'll have people prepared, and also a whole bunch of error codes to dig through. Uh, so if you have friends with an issue, they will know what to do. And uh, also the latest PTU patch, which is something close to what I think will be what we'll see, probably with a couple more hot fixes or speculative fixes added in. Hopefully it'll be even more consistent than patch uh, PTU AB is. So without further ado, Here's me talking about the known issue list and workarounds for PTUAB because it's the latest information I have and that I simply won't be around for the start of the free fly, unfortunately. But rest assured, tomorrow I will do a recap of what we're experiencing and hopefully upcoming events and how the Zeno threat or Ninetales lockdown, whichever they choose to start with, is coming along. Anything running in the background or recording will add difficulty in keeping your frame rates up and getting it loaded, etc., etc. So bear that in mind. Uh, they will still have, might have an issue with server connection timeouts, aka the 30Ks with a bad token error. You have to restart the game in order to work around this. You might want to just restart the launcher if you're restarting the game completely, just as a complete clean restart. I have not seen many of these on the PTU. I've had one in the one a few patches ago. So your mileage may vary, but I, I'm not too nervous about that one. Uh, Star Citizen may crash immediately after launch game, goes without saying. And they mention a few different apps. This is something that's been ongoing. Uh, Komodo, Acronis, Active Protection, and Sonic Studio are all seem to have issues with the game. So I would close those, then run the game. Uh, elevators or environment content will occasionally be missing in the PU. I have had this happen a lot on the PTU. Um, basically, you make leaps of faith, for lack of a better term. You see nothing but black in front of you, the darkness almost of space. And then uh, the, you walk through anyway and the floor appears magically underneath your feet. Um, I've only had once I fell out of a station. That was like 12 patches ago. <laughs> and of course, I just respawned up above the station again. And that was actually my EBA exploration of Crusader L1 Ambitious Dream. Uh, was that one? Was that station? Uh, players are unable to leave a party from the main menu. And the workaround is to go into Star Marine, and do an invite, leave the party, and exit back to main menu, and it works like a charm. I haven't had to use that, that yet. I have heard it works. Using a med pen may have occasionally no effect. The, I, the idea is that you stack med pens. You just go run back in and you throw another med pen in. You keep chucking them in. Uh, they're cheap. Use them. Uh, hard to read. Chat windows and ultra wide monitors. Same deal. Older issue. Swapping FPS weapons drops or removes the original weapon. Same deal. It's uh, something that's been ongoing. Try to use pick me ups and cheap weapons that you don't care about, not with ones with skins. As your main weapon, you can remember you can carry two weapons, so you could have some, one for show and one for use. Uh, mineable com that are your main weapons. Mineable commodities, data and scan mode displays incorrect percentage values. Still screwing over the miners, unfortunately. Um, when will those enters learn? <laughs> the player may become unable to open hammerhead turret doors, leaving them trapped inside. Unfortunate. 
Constellation Andromeda co-pilot unable to target while in missile operator mode. So these, both these, all three of these, the Grim Hex elevators not working as well, are uh, issues that are ongoing. I don't have an easy answer for either one of these. I mean, other than just the Andromeda co-pilot will have to be a gunner or something like that. But um, the elevators on Grim Hex, you can you can beat you can beat EVA around. Um, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, I might put the video at the end of this because it's been one of those things where I've put it on so many of these videos now. I'm probably, you guys are probably pretty sick of seeing that video pop up. So, uh, search missions such as shipment lost and lost cargo do not update once a player has collected the cargo box. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a shame. Uh, unable to complete box delivery missions in Area 18 as Kiosk rejects boxes. <laughs> The legendary Demon Fang Combat Knife Asset is missing from the game. And uh, here's another workaround one, and this is one that's good for new players. When entering the pilot seat of the 100i, the animation may not complete, leaving the player facing away from the screen. If you cannot see when you hold down F and look from your left to your right and look for exit, if you can't see the exit button, hit the Y key on your keyboard. That should get you out of the seat and get you out of trouble. Uh, occasionally, the quantum drive may start spooling with no known cause. It's a simple thing sometimes after spooling and calibrating the quantum drive attempting to initiate jump nothing happens another workaround one where you move the ship's reticle away you move back to recalibrate um this is an oldie but goodie but uh, bears mentioning again i found if this workaround does not work where you just turn the ship away while the b key is still active and you look back and then it works if it does not work uh, i found warping to a nearby location has helped me get past a lot of the issues with that um Fix one's client crash, six one server crash. I would expect pretty much the spinning image of these of these, maybe with two or three of these additional fix fixed and no longer in the known issues area. And I would also expect a couple more client and server cr crash fix. And I do not think that they'll have Xeno threat tonight. I think they're going to be worried about stability and they're going to be focused on getting the servers able to control under control. During such a huge free fly event, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of new players and a lot of old time players jumping on all at the same time. I think that there is going to be a crazy amount of uh, workload on the server team already. And they've already explained that there is, there is this idea that it will not be automated currently. And uh, right now they have to switch it on manually for the Xeno threat and the Nine Tails lockdown. Xeno threat incursion, Nine Tails lockdown are both two different events. Uh, whereas the Nine Tails lockdown is devoted towards quantum jamming a station and requiring medical supplies to be delivered, all while player and PV and uh, NPCs are trying to NPC pirates are trying to attack the station and hold it, hold it, keep it keep it down and there's scanning involved the nine tails lockdown is far more straightforward it is literally go collect boxes to fix the javelin and then they want to try to kill the javelin they're both different styles of gameplay there's no quantum jamming so far the ones i've seen tonight in the zenith threat incursion um and they're directly trying to remove the navy from the system from stanton i mean it's it's a much bigger scale at least it feels that way because when the Javelin's involved, it's, it's stuck in dock. But the uh, the Nine Tails lockdown is certainly more explorer worthy. I, I don't know how to describe it. You have a lot of times where you just see red blips in the distance, and you have to cut the distance or let them come to you, and then you finally get to see what you're gonna fight. The distances are big. And ships that have longer scan ranges may benefit in that type of scenario. Ships with missiles may benefit it. Um, you, you will see like these weird little blips, these, these red blips on the horizon, and they'll slowly get more and more into your span, and then all of a sudden they become real ships real fast. Um, it, it's a very, uh, it's a very nuanced thing, but I do think it's interesting that the Nine Tails Lockdown is a different kind of experience, and it makes you move around a lot. Whereas with the uh, with the Xeno Threat Incursion, you basically have to just hold the box field as the good guys and hold the Javelin and just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Occasionally, you may need to resupply or get repairs at, at the station that's right behind the Incursion sites. But if you don't need to, 
that's it. Whereas Nine Tails Lockdown, it's almost like a clock around the entire station. You're moving, you're quantuming, you're 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 slowly moving, um, and you're fighting and fighting and fighting, and then finally you find a random location that you're going to fight the 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 actual fleet at of the, of the Nine Tails. So it's a little different experience. I think it's really cool that they they have both at the same time. Like they're different times, but they're like in the same patch. It's hard to describe that. But um, I'm looking forward to both. I'm glad that they're coming off and on for the foreseeable future. Um, Tony Z's vision is going to be that they should be automated in the sense of players will eventually be able to conduct certain things to check the boxes where these pirates will feel that they can do it. It might be that there's enough piracy activity by players and NPCs are getting away with enough piracy that they, the, the pirates see an opportunity. It may also be that they need to have a certain amount of money. So if, 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 if people with less than stellar reputations uh, are, running, um, are running a lot of missions for the pirates and giving them resources by completing these missions, suddenly the pirates will have enough money to buy an Idris or buy hammerheads, etc., and then conduct these operations. And then finally it would be the buy-in of the players how many good players versus bad players are in a certain area at a certain time you know that the pirates feel like they have a, a, a opportunity to really strike out at this specific station because it's full of pirates anyway you know that kind of thing so it's going to be interesting to see uh how these things shake out i do want to note that if a player especially a new player gets quote quote unquote stuck at a, at a nine tails lockdown station where you can't warp away or or players are trying to hold hold it down that the best thing you can do is switch servers that's my best advice uh, if you absolutely have no friends that can spot you or try to help break you out or in the chat is not helping um, part you can't find any parties to join to get to get information to fight back the best opportunity and best advice I can offer you as a solo player is to switch servers you can do that by exiting the main menu and honestly if you're in the u.s switch to eu if you're in the eu switch to u.s um those are the two i recommend uh for most people uh, they, those two sets of servers is the ones i have the most experience on without like a huge amount of lag um i think i've talked about this in the last video about latency but just in general the closest servers to you have the best latency no matter what, no matter how good the servers are. So uh, even the EU servers, I notice a little bit, but not enough for it to be world ending. And most importantly, you're guaranteed that it'll be a different server. So that is a last, last case scenario, but you can do that. Um, and always remember that if your ship is destroyed, you're only a timer away from getting it back. Don't load it up with cargo <laughs> if you're just trying to get out. Don't um, don't make any attempts at that kind of stuff, and just just get get out of dodge. Just a reminder that the tests that I've seen, it's 250 kilometers from the edge of the station to the edge of the area that is quantum jammed. 250 kilometers. So use your fastest ship. If something is catching up with you, sometimes doing a hard turn or bank may help especially just keep pointed away from this station because some ships are great in a straight line but the minute they try to turn they turn like a truck also the h key is your friend whenever you hear missile lock or screeching noises or just once in a while spam it h key will help kick out flares and chaff that will hopefully keep your ship from getting hit by missiles if they can't keep up with you they'll probably start trying to shoot missiles it trust good luck out don't don't uh, give up on the game just because of that that's my only fear with the Nine Tails Lockdown is that newer players that only have like one or two ships will feel like they're stuck in a station and unable to get out and no one will help them get out. So um, also remember that the event is on a timer. So most likely if by the time you log out for the night and you come back, it'll be gone. <laughs> um, but and or at the very least, there'll be new sets of players outside, um, to say the least. But uh, let's just say that I, I feel pretty confident that we won't have too many issues like that. Uh, finally, I wanted to talk about error codes. Um, so I mentioned kind of in passing these error codes. Uh, they've been updating these knowledge bases a lot lately. 
So I'm going to include at the bottom of this video a link to this specific error code, and you can see the on the right side articles in this section, a whole bunch of other error codes. See that? A whole bunch. Well, um, they explain what they're about and why they're there. So this is a great step. Instead of like filing a petition, and you might, especially at a busy time like this, you might see it days from now. This is a great way for you to try to figure it out and drag your friends into it. Share the misery. So if one of you is having this trouble, I would suggest that, you know, you kind of guys kind of work together, write it through this and see if what, what issue they're facing, the one that is suffering from this error. Um, and you may be surprised. It may be something very simple. Um, they talk about like uh, using a VPN as one of the options that you might want to try. Um, try running the launcher as an administ administrator. Like really, this is, I mean, that's really simple. We're trying to run it as administrator. But that might be not something you think about right away. Also, don't assume your, your friends are all aware of this, especially if you're the one that's been in this game for a while and they are not. Um, this is something that, that, that may not happen too easily. Yesterday on the honest assessment for new players and returning players, I explained that the concurrent downloads and download speed limits may be necessary for certain players. They're talking about it right here. The, this error can result from these uh, speed limits not being observed. And then your ISP or your router that you're sharing, especially if you're in a, a family shared environment or a, a roommate situation where you all share the same router and there's plenty of uh, products, TVs and streaming devices and laptops and, and PCs all and consoles all sharing the internet. Um, suddenly you trying to slam through, you know, 30 megabytes a second or something is going to, even though you might have that on, on paper, it may not actually be able to be do that, especially when you start dividing your internet up amongst different things. And then the router may not even be able, it may physically on paper be able to handle that, but just the concurrent downloads may knock out the router. And then the router just shuts off the connection says, okay, I'm good now. <laughs> and it doesn't even tell you. So these are some interesting things. I, I thought I'd share this one because it was just literally updated moment minutes ago. Um, and use these resources. Use these resources because these will help you now, tonight, when you're sitting here with your friends trying to figure out how to get them started and you're facing a major error. And um, especially, it's, it's bad enough if it's friends on the internet. If it's friends in person or family in person, you, you, you know, you want to look like the big hero. You know, you got them all signed, excited about this new game and <laughs> and you get their computer set up and then this this type of thing hits you. Having these errors in your error codes and, and troubleshooting in your back pocket is, is pretty valuable. I think CIG dropped the ball not having these on the front page of the website. They should have like a free fly splash page that has the error codes, that has the download for the launcher, and then also has a walkthrough of how to make your account and what is important about making your account. Like think of the name, but don't think too much. You can always have handles. Um, what, 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 what is, you know, what is the importance of picking the U S servers versus the EU servers, especially, and no, I'm not picking on the third set of services. I never use them. So I'm just, that's how it is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry. It's, uh, it's something special every time. Um, but at the end of the day, you will have a, a, a game that works. You will have your launcher up, just like I just did. And uh, this will be launchable. Wait for the wait for this to come up, whatever. And like I said, it should have all been here, but it's not. So that's why this video exists. Um, and if you look, I have Max Unlimited, but uh, yeah, this might not be for everybody. And you'll you'll get your you'll get your uh, you'll get your patch done twenty minutes fifteen minutes slower. But you know what? You'll get it, and that'll be the important part instead of fighting with it for hours. And um, yeah, uh, one other thing, I would not share the PTU with with friends that have been out a while or new friends. Just let them get settled on live, and then you can PTU them later. You know, I think that's one mistake we we do a lot is we try to expose them expose everyone to extreme in-depth stuff that comes with this and also the size of, of the additional space that required for the PTU. Even if they copy all the files over, it's still a huge amount of space that you're taking up on their hard drive. And remember, we're trying to do something sustainable here. You, you want folks to be able to enjoy themselves and feel like they've really done something good. I'm also going to try to find a link for the paging file discussion. I had to do that, but 
it occurred to me that there's probably different operating systems. If you're running Windows 10 versus 7 or Linux or Mac or whatever people are running, I, I don't I don't really. I, I, I think the biggest thing is you're going to have to go, go it and get in that paging file. And I think you literally just type in paging if you're on Windows 10. But uh, I'll try to find a link and throw it in if I have a moment. But I wish you all a wonderful free fly event. Fly safe. And please be nice to the new guys. Because those new guys and gals are who are going to be the core of the, uh, of the community as it grows. And, well, part of it, part of it, we're still here, dang it. <laughs> we're just as important as anyone else. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next, co next couple days. And we'll see how it shakes out. I think at the beginning of these events marks the, the, the maximum number of people. And I think with a lot of these things, we, we, we forget that, uh, you know, we need this community to grow. It can't be always on the backs of us. You know, there's only so many, so many spaceships we can buy. There's only so many things that we can push for. As this community grows, we grow stronger in general. And uh, we get a more lifelike, wide-spaced universe, especially when we start filling in four, five, even systems in the coming year. Um, if, they're even, if you're even talking about that, we're going to need a lot of people to fill those, or it's going to just be as dead as it feels now when it's not a major event and everybody's at the same place. So, yeah, um, I can't wait to see it. I hope to see a, a large uptick in players, and hopefully we'll be able to light the way and kind of show them the ropes, and uh, I, I hope your works get full of new players. Take it easy.